You're listening to Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Give God 90 Radio On Demand. My name is Jerry Mitchell, your host for Give God 90. Thank you so much for joining me for just a little while today as we look at something, uh, and I hope you've been kind of following along, because the last uh, couple of of podcasts I've done, uh, and even the live Facebook, we've looked at this, beginning to study this concept of worth versus value. And I'm going to bring some of that together today. And I've got, we've got to establish this so that as we go forward, the next thing we're going to move into uh, here in, in just a, another show or two uh, is going to look at something very, very important. And when it all comes together, I think you're going to have a completely new understanding of why we look at people the way we do. Okay? So... Before we dig into this, let's uh, remind everyone, because we have all kinds of new listeners joining from, I mean, all over the world. We have people not just in Uganda, Ukraine, now in Saudi Arabia. We have people uh, in Dubai, Australia, and South America, in different countries. When I look at the statistics and I see the way this is growing, you folks are the ones out there who are doing it. You're sharing this. Uh, it's going out, it's being, it, you know, this word is getting out. And I think it's getting out because we have no religious affiliation, we have no uh, agenda other than one. And that is, if you live the way your Creator intended you to live, your life will improve. That is our main concept, our main goal. That hasn't changed since day one. So uh, I do take a stand against some of the doctrines of the modern Christian churches. I take a stand against some other things, but here's the, the basic agenda is live the way your creator designed you to live. It's that simple. It's that easy. Uh, so if you're new, we t- I try to tell you this up front. And uh, if you don't like that, well, you know, you can either listen and see what I have to say, or you can go move on and not. Uh, waste the most valuable asset you have, and that's your time. So with that being said, let me uh, introduce the the website to the new folks, uh, givegod90.com, givegod90.com. There you can contact me through uh, email, or we have a Facebook page, Give God 90 Facebook page. You can contact me, a private messenger, through that if you choose. There's all kinds of things we can do. People keep asking, will you come speak? Yeah, I will. If if you have a group that is open to someone coming and speaking, I'm available for that. We can, you know, if you message me, we can, or email me, uh, we can certainly talk about that. Uh, that's not a problem. We, we, we'll find a way to get me there, and uh, we'll speak about that. There's two books out, Tradition to Truth and God's Universe, God's Rules. Uh, both of them, a very, very uh, easy read on Tradition to Truth. Uh, God's Universe, God's Rules gets a little more in depth and in detail, but I think most of you appreciate it. I've had some very good reviews from that. The uh, other thing I need to tell you is this podcast reaches out uh, many, many countries, many, many ways, thanks to the uh, application of Spreaker. Uh, We have our own app. If you want to go to your uh, Play Store or App Store, it's uh, Give God 90 app. Takes about a minute to download. It's absolutely free. Somebody else has paid for it, so you don't have to. Uh, that way you can download, search the archives. You can do all kinds of fun stuff, and there are many, many people out there who do this. I I really am uh, humbled when I see the number of downloads that we get uh, every week. That it, I, I truly am amazed, impressed, uh, humbled. I, I I really don't understand why everybody likes what I have to say, but people do, and as long as people do, uh, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm here basically to uh, not tell you how to live your life, but just to tell you that if you live your life the way God designed you to live, your life's going to improve. Things are going to be, they're not going to be perfect, 
but they're going to be better. It's that simple because it's going to change your outlook. And that's what uh, the Almighty is looking to do is to change your outlook. So as we, as we continue to talk about value and worth, let's get started with a very basic concept. If we look in Scripture for the word value, uh, we're going to learn that the, the, the ancient Hebrew concept of value is different than what the 21st century, especially American, concept of value is. When we think about value, many times we look at an item and we say, well, what's its value? What's its, you know, how much is it? What is it worth? But really it goes deeper than that. Most Americans concentrate on, you know, how much is it going to cost me? Well, you know, what it's going to cost me does not determine its value. If I spend, uh, now I spend a lot of time, uh, as most of you know, regular listeners know, I spent almost 30 years uh, in, in large animal reproduction, and I did some construction off and on through that. So I'm used to, to good tools. If, if I'm going to make a living, uh, you know, a car mechanic is going to have a set of good tools, right? <clears throat> Our son is a mechanic. He works in a mine in Colorado. He needs good tools because the, the heavy equipment that he works on, he needs dependable tools so he's not stuck trying to make something work that's, that's completely worthless, useless to him, right? So he places not only a, a good chunk of his income in his tools because he knows he's going to get that back, right? He's, he's going to buy something once and it's going to last him a long time. Now, the average uh, homeowner, let's say, <clears throat> might not need a $25 screwdriver. And yes, there are screwdrivers out there that cost $25. Uh, the, the average homeowner might go to their department store, maybe a hardware store, maybe a, a box store, and they're going to spend a couple of bucks on a, on a screwdriver. But somebody who depends on making their living needs a screwdriver they can depend on. They don't want to be breaking uh, a, a screwdriver every five minutes, and then it, it not only costs them downtime, they have to have a different tool to use what that one was in, in, uh, intended for, right? So they're you know out a lot of time, and time is money, right? It's your most valuable asset. So for the average homeowner who's only going to be use a screwdriver maybe once a week, if that, I know many people who, who have them in a drawer, and it's the bottom of the drawer, they never see it, okay? That's going to be different. You know, that dollar twenty-five that you spend at the department store, it will last you a long time because you're not using it all the time. But for the mechanic, they use it all the time, every day, all day long. Uh... When we talk about, you know, I was in large animal reproduction, we were working with horses. When you, when you work around large animals, horses, cattle, they, they like to tear things up. They really do. So you need good equipment. You've got to have strong fences. You've got to have, uh, it, for your personal equipment, you, you've got to have, if you're going to put a saddle on a horse, it needs to be comfortable for the horse first, comfortable for the rider second, and it has to be something that's not going to fall apart, uh, and you have to buy it all over again uh, next week. So, you know, a good, sturdy, leather, well-built saddle will serve you for many, many, many years. You, you make one investment, and the value is not necessarily in what you pay for it. The value is in what it saves you later. And the Hebrew uh, word erek is often... Well, sometimes translated as value, sometimes translated as order. Uh, it, it establishes a order of, we could almost say priority in English. So when we think about the value of something, what we're looking at is not the immediate cost. The value is in establishing the order is what I'm going to pay for it and how it's going to serve me how long it's going to last me, the order that this item might present itself 
you know, 10, 15 years in the future, is it still going to be doing the job it's intended to do now? Now, that's an item. Let's think about this when we think about the value of a person, and hopefully you're not thinking about the financial cost of a person. If you are, chances are you're not listening to my program. Okay, it's that simple. Because if you're thinking about the financial cost of another person, uh, you're either uh, in the uh, slavery business or you're in some type of child trafficking business, you're probably not listening to me. You should be, but you're probably not. Uh, because those things, not only are they against the law, they you know stand against the instructions of the Almighty, and that's why you're probably not listening to me. Okay? So, if you're thinking about establishing the value of a person, what we need to look at is the order of this person. Is this person going to uh, be predominant in my life for many, many years? Is this person someone that I can depend on, someone I can trust? Is this person going to establish themselves and establish their order? Is this person going to be the same person, only hopefully growing stronger in in God's Word, right? But let's think about this this way. Is this person going to improve my life by me spending my most valuable asset, my time with this person, or is this person going to diminish my life? That's the value we look at when we think of people. How about yourself? Are you someone? Are you someone who benefits the people around you? Are you someone who wants to improve the life of of, of the people that you associate with? Or are you someone who diminishes their value so that you can look better. See, that's what we get into when we talk about value of people. The value of a person is extremely important. And one of the ways you can help to improve your value as a person is, believe it or not, to improve your worth. Now, worth is a little different. Are you worthy are you, do you deserve, okay, worthy is deserving. Are you worthy, do you deserve the time I'm going to spend with you? Do you deserve, are you worthy, uh, if I'm an employer, do you deserve and are you worthy of the pay that I'm giving you? I learned something many, many years ago when, when uh, I first started out. Um, and this this saying really doesn't apply to everybody, but we can apply it to everybody in certain ways. There there was something that we learned many, many years ago when we were looking for uh, jobs, depending on where, mostly in the agricultural industry, uh, you would, as you were negotiating with, with a potential employer, you know, when it came to salary, it's uh, give me room and board and pay me what I'm worth. Now, this this might not fit exactly today, but we can use it today. Because as you're looking for a job and your employer is is looking to hire someone and you come to the part about uh, wages, you know, your base should be what it costs you to live, your room and board. You know, is the job you're looking at going to pay for your mortgage or your rent, your, you know, your housing, is it going to pay for what you eat? And is it going to pay to put clothes on your back? Once, If that is what your base is looking at, the minimum you're looking at, you're look, not looking at what you're worth. Okay, You're looking at the job and what it pays. But if you have the attitude, give me my base. Give me my room and board. Make sure that my rent's covered or my mortgage is covered. Make sure I can have food in my belly. Okay, Now pay me what I'm worth. That's everything above what they're looking for. If they can afford to pay you what you're worth, here's the here's where the important part comes in. You have to consistently have the mindset that I'm not working for the base. 
I have to consistently attempt to improve what I did yesterday by being a better person, better employee, better worker, however you want to say it. I have to consistently improve my worth, what I deserve, above the base pay. Because employers, and this is something I was talking about the other night uh, on, on the live that we did. You know, not everybody is going to get paid the same and nobody should get paid the same. Because no two people have the same set of skills. So two people doing the same job, that, that base rate of pay, uh, let's say at, well, I'm going I'm to put this low. I'm going to make life easy. Let's say your base rate of pay is a dollar an hour. Okay? That's your base rate of pay. That pays for your rent. That, and, and this is all fictitious, right? Nobody knows you can't live on a dollar an hour right now. Not in the United States. There may be other countries you can do that, but not in the United States. So if you're getting a dollar an hour, and that that dollar an hour provides you with uh, your rent or your mortgage, it pays for your food, and I'm not talking about paying for you know caviar every day for lunch. All right, I'm I'm talking about you know regular people food, not not something extravagant. If it pays for your food and a place to live, if you got clothes on your back, now, what are you actually worth? What what is going to bump you up to that dollar twenty five or that dollar and a half? That's your worth ethic. That is your value. You establish your the order of yourself above what you deserve. Here's the here's the kicker. When the Almighty looks at you, okay, he's already established what you deserve. He's always already established what you're worth. If you say, yes, I am going to live by your instructions. I'm going to be part of your covenant. I'm going to uh, put myself out there so that I uh, have a, a degree of understanding between you, my creator, and myself. And we're going to live, I'm going to do my best to live according to your instructions, you have established your worth. You've established what you deserve. What's your value? Your value is in your integrity, your order. Your value is in how you establish to do the things he tells you to do, to follow his instructions. The more you follow his instructions, the more valuable you are to the Creator. Remember Job? <clears throat> now, Job was already a wealthy man, right? Now, you might think that Job's kind of an odd biblical figure to use in this uh, example. But he's really not. Because Job said, yep, I'm going to stay faithful to my God. Okay? I'm going to remain faithful to the Almighty no matter what. He establishes his worth by saying that. By doing the things that he did, Job established a certain amount of value. Now with value comes trust. Not only did Job speak and promise, Job's actions, when the Almighty looked at him, said, I can trust Job. And God trusted Job enough to defeat Satan. Satan comes along and says, you know what, God... The only reason that old man Job down there, the only reason he's staying faithful is because you do so much for him. You pay him a pretty good salary, and, and, and you, you blessed him pretty good. The only reason he's staying faithful is because, you know, just look. God says, no, I don't think so. Don't think so. In fact, I'll tell you what. Just look at old Job. Here's the deal. Let's start taking some things away from Job, but don't touch him yet. You, you, can't, you can't touch Job yet. And, and as Job begins to lose things, his faith is still strong. His trust that our Creator will provide for him never, ever changed. As God looks at this, he says, I can trust this man. He, has, he is valuable to me. He is so valuable to me that I will use him to defeat my enemy. 
That is trust from the Almighty. And it works both ways. What happened when, when Satan was finally defeated? Job was rewarded. His value, his worth increased, uh, we could almost say exponentially. His value, he was so valuable to his God that the Almighty took him and said, Job, I am going to reestablish you. I am going to bless you. I am going to do things for you. And if he can do it for Job, he can do it for you. Let me say that again. If he can do that for Job, he can do it for you. All you have to do is be as trustworthy and as valuable to your creator as Job was. Now that's asking a lot, isn't it? I've said before on these programs, I have said before, I don't know if I want God trusting me that much. But really, we do. We want, we want to be so valuable to our creator that there is nothing that can shake our trust in him. There is nothing that can separate us from him. Our worth, our value, our established uh, way of living. You know, just following his instructions, that's kind of going along for the ride, right? Well, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of going along for the ride. I'll be all right. You know, I'm doing what God asked me to do. But no, you, that is the base pay. That's your room and board. What, what establishes your worth, what establishes your worthiness, is how completely organized, how completely, uh, <laughs> how completely, Completely, you do the things you do to say, I will not, I will not fall for these tricks that the enemy's putting out here. I can see them coming. I know when to walk around this or walk over that or go under that. I know what to do when because I am following the Almighty's instructions to the point where I trust Him more than I trust myself. I trust the Almighty more than I trust me, even though I can see things and I think this might be the way, but God says that's not the way, so I'm going His way. That's what establishes our value. When we say, you know, God, you tell me to go to the left, but to the right looks a whole lot easier. But I'm going to go to the left here, and, and I'm going to go this way around, whatever it is, because you're telling me to go this way. Even though the way I see looks right, there might be something there that I'm not seeing. Maybe, maybe you get to the point where God says, you know what, you need to go over this obstacle. Well, God, you know it would be a whole lot easier to dig a hole under it, and I could just slither under it. God says, no, you got to start climbing. You got to go over it, but but it'd be easier. You know, there's a hole right here in this fence. I can go under. No, no, you go over. You climb. Okay. Well, when you get to the other side of whatever it is you just climbed over, and you look, maybe there's something dangerous in that hole. Maybe there's something there that that the Almighty knew was there that you couldn't see. Maybe there's something there that He understood you didn't want to be part of. What establishes you to benefit the people around you is in how willing you are, how willing you are to allow the Almighty to guide your life. Because when you do that, then the people around you are going to look around. They're going to look at you and they're going to say, I don't know what it is you got, but I need to be part of it. They're going to see you as someone who is valuable to them. Now, they might try to use you. They might try to uh, uh, influence you. They might try to, you know, I, and we do this to pastors all the time, Christians. You do this to pastors. You know what? You're a man of God. You know what? You, you studied the Bible. You, you know all these things. If I stick close to you, I can skirt into heaven on your, curtail, on your coattails. Right? You know, y'all know you do it. Y'all know you do it. You invite the preacher to your house. You know, you, 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 shake, you make sure you shake his hand, tell him a wonderful sermon on your way out. Right? Oh, that was such a good message, pastor. 
Oh, I don't know know what we could do without you. Don't know what we could do without you. You want to skirt into heaven? It doesn't work that way. Okay? It just doesn't work that way for a lot of reasons. You have to establish your own value. You have to establish your own worth. If you put yourself in the mindset of my my basics are going to be met, but my, what I'm worth, what I really deserve is above that, you're going to work harder. You're going to work harder. You're going to want to work harder. You're going to want to do better. You're going to want to be a better person. Now, if you can do that for an employer, how much more is the Almighty going to pour out blessings on you if you do it for Him? Think about that. If you're willing to work hard for an employer, how much more are you going to get from your Creator? That is, if that didn't blow your mind when I just said that, you're willing to work hard for an employer, are you willing to work hard for God? And I'm not talking about knocking on doors and saying, can I tell you about Jesus? That's not what I mean. I mean living your life as an example to others, the people around you, so that they see how improved your life is and they want to be part of what you've got. They want to know what your secret is. They want to know what you're doing. They want you in, your, in their life because they see you are valuable. Not just to God, but to them. They want to, be, they want to spend their most valuable asset, their most important asset. They want to spend their time with you because you're valuable. And it's all because you've changed your attitude. It's all because you've changed your outlook on life. It's all because you have chosen. You have decided that you need to improve your life. And the best way to do that is to do things the way your Creator designed you to do them. To live your life according to His plan for you, not your plan for you. Yeah, it might be more fun over there. It might look like more fun over there, but it's really not. When God says, I need you to, to go to the left around this obstacle, and you look and you say, well, man, that's tall grass. I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to walk through that tall grass. Maybe he's telling you to go over an obstacle. You know, there's a gate right there. It doesn't matter what's in the gate. You go over. Maybe he tells you, you need to start digging because you've got to go under this one. Maybe you need to go to the right. Maybe, maybe for right now, you need to stand here and listen for some further instruction. Maybe, just maybe, you need to pick up your Bible and see what you need to do in a certain situation because most of them are in there. I don't know any situation today, uh, really, that's not, that can't be found in Scripture in one way or another. And I'm not, you know, there's examples all through it about a lot of things. But if you're willing to follow his instructions, you know, and and Christians, I know that there's a lot of good Christian folks out there that say, we need to pray about this. Oh, yeah, you need to pray about it. But you know what you do when you're done praying? Is you get up off your knees, you get off of that church pew, you get up off of wherever you're at, you get up. And you go do what he told you to do. You cannot live your life hiding in prayer. It's impossible. Moses couldn't spend the rest of his, you know, (laughs) Moses couldn't spend the next 40 years standing in front of that burning bush arguing with God. He had to get up and go back and do what he was told. Right? Christians, Yeshua, Jesus, couldn't spend the rest of his life in that garden. He had to get up and go do what he was told to do. You don't get anywhere by being stagnant. 
follow his instructions, improve your life, benefit the people around you by being more valuable to your creator. Until next time, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Have a blessed week.